We're going to go from black to green. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep it green. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Go green. That's the go, Mike. That means go, 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 go. Praise God. I'll preach a while not go. Hallelujah. I didn't mean for you to go. Oh, you come. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. See you later, Pastor. Love you. You'll be back. Go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 30. The book of Proverbs chapter 30. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs chapter 30. What I'm about to preach, I actually preached where I was at this morning. And I told my kids when we were leaving, I said, I heard the Lord tell me to preach it again tonight. And I told them, I said, now watch the response. Watch what's the difference of what's going to go on tonight. And that's no dishonor to where I was at this morning. I'm just going by what the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Because the Holy Ghost stopped me in the message this morning and told me that was enough. And I don't always have the Holy Ghost tell me that. You know, Jesus said, I got many things to tell you, but you can't bear them right now. And in Mark 6 and 56, it said, as many as touched him were made whole. Amen. Now, that didn't mean people didn't respond to the altar because they did. People were in the altars. Amen. But the Lord told me, he said, I can touch you and you can get healed. But if you ever touch me, you learn how to touch me, you can get whole. Nowhere in Scripture do you find people getting whole when Jesus touched them, but when people touched Jesus, they got whole. Come on, somebody. In other words, God don't want to just be the one doing all the touching. He, want, he wants to raise up a people that knows how to touch him. And the Holy Ghost told me to stop. He said, that's enough, because I was about to walk toward the altar and start laying hands on people. He said, but I want you to do that right now. He said, because they're not ready. And he said, Sometimes that's what we get accustomed to. And we're always waiting on the preacher to get us into the presence of God or get us to the next level. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And when Jesus walked through cities, people thronged him, the Bible said. Somebody say thronged him. That means they just obsessively, amen, just overcame him, just grabbing and snatching on him. Hallelujah. But often it would say one, just a, just a few would actually touch him. In other words, everybody was touching him. People were grabbing on him and pulling on him. Hallelujah. But most of them just called him Jesus of Nazareth. But it was the ones that knew who he was, that he was the Messiah, the sent one. Hallelujah. That touched him. Praise God that virtue flowed out and they were healed. They were delivered. Praise God. I'm telling you, there's a virtue tonight that only comes when you learn how to touch him. That means you don't wait on a preacher. Come on, somebody. You don't wait on a teacher. You don't wait on nobody around you. Come on, somebody, to coach you into the countenance of God. Come on, somebody, to spark you, so to speak, to get you encouraged to go after God. You're like, excuse me. Y'all can stay there if you want to. I'm going to go after God. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, are you, how touchy are you? Hallelujah. No, no, no wives look at your husbands and no husbands look at your wives. Now, that ain't what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Touchy. Amen. Sometimes, you know, you, my wife accuses me of getting touching her last nerve all the time. And I said, it ain't a last one. It's an eternal one. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's an everlasting one. Hallelujah. My middle name should be called last nerve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But anyhow, besides that, praise God. God wants us to learn how to touch him. Amen. And there's going to come a point in this service tonight, I'm going to go ahead and give you a heads up. I'm not giving an altar call. Matter of fact, I don't even know if I'll give one except to sinners. As long as this revival goes on from here on. I don't know if the Holy Ghost will, unless he has me to call somebody out personally or whatever, or do something like that. Because I don't find in Scripture altar calls. I find hungry people. I find people, the Bible said in Matthew 21 and 10, that when Jesus came into the city, the city was moved. Somebody say the city was moved. That meant wherever he was at, they run to where he was. They moved to where he was. They weren't waiting on him to come where they were at. Come on, John 19 and 30 at the cross, he said it's finished. Somebody shout, he's went as far as he needs to go. 
But God said, I want to raise up some touchy people. I want to raise up some touchers. Come on, that know how to touch me. The Bible said in Luke 16 and 16, hey man, the Bible said from John the Baptist unto now the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. Somebody say, every man presseth into it. In other words, during the preaching or even after the preaching, then your part is to do some reaching. If you got good preaching without any good reaching, somebody shout, you ain't gonna have nothing to take place. To reap, glory to God, where God has sown his word, praise the Lord God, you have got to reach for it. Somebody shout, you gotta press. The, the woman with issue of blood in Luke 8, she pressed through the crowds. She pressed through the people to get to where he was and virtue came out of him. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, there's always gonna be somebody in the way. Amen, there's always gonna be something in the way. There's always gonna something tell you, man, just hold back right now. But in Acts 10 and 44, Peter preached the gospel, amen, glory to God, at Cornelius' house, and while he preached, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard. Somebody shout, that's the altar service. While the preaching was going on, the Holy Ghost came down. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Now, they wouldn't have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine that? Your whole family get filled with the Holy Ghost at one time. That meant while Peter was preaching and the Holy Ghost came on them, they responded. They reacted to the move of the Holy Ghost and they moved with him. Come on, somebody. As he moved on them, praise the Lord God. And as they responded, somebody shout as they acted and moved. When he moved, that's when the fire of God manifested. Hallelujah. And it didn't happen with Peter saying, okay, now I'm gonna count to three. Come to the altar. Look at your neighbor and say, you at the altar. This whole place is his altar. Come on, somebody. And if you crawl up on his altar tonight in his presence and die like they did in the old covenant, because that's what happened on altars. Come on, stuff got their throat slit and they bled everywhere and they died and the fire of God answered the death. Come on, somebody. And I'm not telling you come up here and cut your throat and kill yourself. That's the devil. Come on, somebody. But I am telling you tonight, if you'll die to pride, if you'll, if you'll die to what others think, if, if you'll die, come on, somebody, to whatever it is you think uh, that's living in front of you, that's keeping you from getting to him. Somebody shout, if you'll die up, you can live up tonight. Come on, if you can die out, you can live up tonight in the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor say, I love you, but I'm dead to you right now. Tell them, say, I come for Jesus. And tell them, say, if you don't like the fire, you better find you another row of chairs to get on. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And tell them, if you don't feel God in this service, just touch me. Because he's already on me all over me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'll share. Praise God. But I don't know about you. I don't just want a shared experience of his spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I want my own. I, I'm sorry. I can't help it. I'm a little selfish when it comes to that. I want my own. Come on, look at your neighbors. Say, I hope you do too. Glory to God, hallelujah. Because if you just have an experience uh, with somebody else's Holy Ghost, uh, you, you won't last long. Come on, somebody. You need to experience him for yourself. Hallelujah. Touch him. When he comes and sits on you in this service, they somewhere in this service, and some of you, it may be at different times. Some of you, there's going to come a, a time in this service, all of a sudden something going to hit you like, man, I want to run. Somebody, you're going to feel like I ain't nobody else moving. I feel like jumping up and screaming hallelujah. Some of you may just feel like running to the altar, walking to the altar. Glory to God. You may just want to stand up and shout and lift your hands. Come on, somebody. When he moves, move with him. Move with him. Somebody shout, don't out the fire. Look at him and say, the 11th commandment is thou shalt not be a firefighter. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm talking about spiritual things. To the carnal ear, you didn't know what nothing I just said, but amen. Let him that had an ear hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Amen. Revelation 3, 21. Take